and welcome back to the second season of Shrimp and Jazz. We are here. I miss you guys so much, and I can't wait to catch you up on everything that I've been doing. We have so much content for you this season, and I cannot wait on period, okay? But today, instead of doing the traditional cooking show, I kind of don't want to give you guys like formal recipes or something that is so cliche. I want to get a little personal and I want to take you on a journey of what I would eat on a day-to-day -day basis as a chef. Um, and that is my way of saying thank you for tuning in for second season and I want to give a little bit back. So let's get a little vulnerable and we're going to do it, okay? So today we're going to be making roasted snapper with um, shucked oysters, aged steak tartare, and a white wine sauce, and maybe some other surprises along the way. I missed you guys. I hope you guys have been well, and I hope you like this, and let's get started. Okay, so first, I have my oven preheated at 360 degrees, and we're gonna get our snapper, which is right here in my new set. I hope you like it. You kidding me? Okay, come through second season. You better come through. All right, so I got this from Whole Foods and it was completely whole and I was not about that life. So I had them um, cut off the head a little bit, which I'm really glad that they did. Thank you, Jesus. And we are gonna take our knife. So we want to roast the fish whole. And I actually was inspired to do this from my boss. Um, as you guys know, I work at Oven is Like We're Ready. Um, as you guys know, I work at Treva. And I wanted to kind of salute my owner slash boss slash men mentor. Um, he loves fish, he loves seafood and um, I do as well, but he has been schooling me on how to really prepare it. And I saw him take this flounder the other day and put it on the grill, but it didn't break. Like it was like a full body flounder, it was like bong. Like he just really put homeboy on the grill, but he had perfect diamonds. And I was like trying to pick his brain. So he taught me to take my knife and to slide across the last fin here, down to the tail, near the belly. And then we're gonna slide it around near the back fin. And we're gonna do the same thing. Ooh, a lot of scales on bad boy. Maybe we should just scale this first, it might be a little bit easier. Yeah, there we go. So just scaling is when you take your knife, you're just gonna slide up the skin and it takes off those little pesky seafood chips. All right. So we're going down the fin here. There we go, got it. Then you're gonna flip it over the other side and we are gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm pretty much a pescatarian at this point. Um, I feel like I have been most of my life, but I mean, being a chef, I guess I can't necessarily stay a pescatarian, but um, I really do enjoy like seafood and fish. And I find it very much a cheap luxury. I think that a lot of people don't try it because they think it's expensive. You know, you don't have to buy lobster in order to enjoy what comes from the ocean. And you can go with so many different things, especially in Cajun food as well. One of our biggest celebrations is like on Christmas or on your birthday, you actually get woken up to salmon croquettes and grits and eggs, and it's 
it's a fun time. And I love it. All right, so we have this, and we're gonna take this lemon. We're gonna push it, get all the juices flowing. There we go. Look how red this snapper is, jeez. Okay, and we're just gonna take our lemon we're gonna rub it throughout our snapper. I chose snapper as well because it's such adorable fish. Like you could throw this on the grill, you could put this in the oven, you could fry it if you really wanted to. It's a very good time. And it's palate combination, I guess you should call it. It's so versatile, you can do anything, honestly. Okay, so we have that, we have some salt here. I don't put pepper on my fish. I don't think you should. I think pepper ruins anything from the sea. So you will never see me with pepper and fish in the same room. And that's on period. All right, so now we have that, and I have my frying pan here. And it's on five, it's been sitting for a while. And I'm going to take my tongs. So these are like meat and fish roasting tongs. These aren't traditional tongs, um, but they are very adequate and amazing. You can get them on Amazon for $15. I recommend them because when I throw this fish in this frying pan, it's gonna light us up, but it's gonna keep us safe, so let's do it. There we go. And now I'm gonna bring it over here to show you guys what it looks like. You don't wanna put the fish into the pan until it's smoking. It has to smoke. That's gonna give you this beautiful sear on your fish and really bring out the flavor. There we go. So now that you can see that the fins are brown, they're crispy. Now we're gonna throw this in our oven. And we are gonna let little Wilbert roast. Okay, so that's there. And now we are gonna work on our salad. We have mangoes. Turnips. And we have some lemongrass. So we're gonna take this pot right here and we're gonna comfy some turnips. Snapper is such a lean fish that if you don't put it with something fatty, it's kind of boring, I feel. So, put this in here. Y'all, let's talk about it. I have been so tired The restaurant business has not been the same since everything. And I've been working very, very, very hard. I have been on a lot of doubles. And I mean, we're friends, we're close. I should be able to tell you guys that. It's been tough. It's been a rough couple of months, I guess, for everyone, I think. So kudos to you if you're a chef you've been through a very exhausting time. Kudos to you, but we're all in it together. And you should never let go of like your passion. No matter how hard. Y'all, these turnips is dirty. Okay. 
So, I'm gonna rinse these turnips. I need water. I have my olive oil on. It is boiling, I guess. Okay, so our turnips are going to confit in olive oil. And I have some water here to clean off our beets, turnips. So now we have oysters. So I love oysters. They're actually my favorite food. Um, I love them on half shell. And we're gonna make them with champagne and shallots. I have beaver tail and I have Oh man, I forgot the name of them. But they're from Canada, Wellfleet. So I have Wellfleet and we have beaver tail. And I'm so excited. So I'm gonna wipe these off. I feel like a lot of people actually don't like oysters and I don't know why. I feel like everyone should love an oyster. Like if you don't love an oyster, what is wrong with you? You gotta love an oyster. You gotta be adventurous. I think some people don't like the texture, um, which I get, but they're pretty cool. So I have my shucking knife here, and I have a bowl. And we're gonna take champagne. We're making a minuet sauce. So minuet is champagne, sugar, and shallots, and a little bit of vinegar. I need a towel. Up. Oh, I hear a turnips. It's gonna be the bomb. I'm trying to open this safely. Oh God. Okay, we're alive. All right, so we have some champagne. We don't need much. Then we have Vinegar. So about a cup of champagne, about two cups of vinegar, and then I have some cut shallots here. A little salt. Alright, 
Let's see how our snapper is doing. Doing very well. And now for the main event. Da, 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 dry age steak tartare. Mm. I'm so excited. So we're gonna put a little olive oil. A little salt. And I'm gonna take a little tarragon. just rip it in there. I got advice from my mentor. He told me not to mask the tartare too much. He said, because like, let it be like the star of the show. I wanted to put it with like all this stuff, but um, he advised me not to. So kudos to him. And I'm just gonna mix that up. Wow. 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 <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Okay. Oh. So, that right there. You need to try. See what it tastes like with an oyster. Let's get jiggy with it, y'all. Hold on. I want to do something a little crazy. So we have this oyster, right? So what if we were just like wild and crazy? and took this minuet sauce. Man, if you are single, you don't need a man nor a woman. If you got that, I will tell you that right now. Okay, period. Woo, okay. That was delicious. Please try that at home. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm excited to try the entire dish. Okay, so we have our mangoes and our coconuts. Now microgreens. Our snapper is done. Where is that platter? Okay. So for the main event, let's do it, y'all. Look at that beautiful snapper. Ooh. And now we're gonna take a bowl. So we have mangoes. 
microgreens, olive oil, salt, lime, Look at that, look how beautiful that is. And how refreshing, like this is gonna fill you up so much without even like filling you up. And now we're gonna do the tartare, right there on the sides. I'm actually having a little get together after this called Tiki, uh, Tori's Tiki. And I think that they will enjoy this. We're gonna shuck one last oyster. If you don't know how to shuck an oyster, you just put it in right here, push in and pop it. It's very easy. Disconnect the belly, take out the little sand, boom. And then get a couple turnips, confit turnips. I was actually watching um, Peter Cottontail and I was inspired by the turnips the other night. My brother just had a baby and we used to call him that when he was a kid, so. There's that. And our coconut water. And this is what I would eat if I was by myself. This is treat yourself, love yourself moment. I do not have a fork, but Guess we'll try this. Mm. Yes, y'all. Yes, this is it. This is the ultimate summer go-to Tory time. This is Tory time. If anybody ever asked you like, oh, do you know Tori? This is Tori right here. This is amazing. Thank you so much for tuning in to the second season of Shrimp and Jazz. We're doing it, okay? And I can't wait to see you in the next episode to where I'm gonna bring you someone who is so funny, so successful with the best advice in the entire world. Plus, I can't wait for you to meet Uncle Itis. He's a trip. See you next one. Bye.